All right, guys, welcome back to Rank of Survival and Fieldcraft. I'm Andrew, and what I have for you today is a quick video, a discussion, really, on survival and bushcraft knives. I'm going to show you the majority of fixed blade knives I have in my collection that I've used for years and years for survival as well as bushcraft and kind of show the difference in my opinion on a survival knife versus kind of a higher end bushcraft knife. They can be used for the same things. It's not really that much of a difference in my opinion I guess but there are characteristics that would benefit survival a little bit more than it would bushcraft and vice versa and we're going to talk about those. Now I wasn't planning on making a video this weekend. I wanted to take a break from YouTube but also the NCAA wrestling championships were going on and I'm a huge wrestling fan. I wrestled for about 10 years and I've got the cauliflower ear to prove it but wanted to watch those Thursday, Friday and yesterday and then finally decided you know what I'm gonna put up a video and talk about knives really quick and hopefully that'll be interesting enough to everybody that we can kind of engage with survival knives. You guys can see my little collection and talk about differences and I give my opinion. It's been several months or even years since I've seen somebody offer kind of opinions on survival knives but based on my experience military side as well as civilian and doing kind of my own thing with survival I'm going to show you kind of where I started off and then how I progressed through the knives. I'm not going to go through each and every one. A lot of the characteristics are going to be the same with these knives but I'll show you where I started kind of the transition in the middle period and then kind of moving up toward higher end knives and then even some of the uh, safe queens as they're called the ones that I protect and keep in the safe because they're fairly expensive I'm not going to use them that much but I'll show you kind of my knives and the collection and where I started off is down here in this area I used to carry a Holtafors, uh, just outdoor knife, I forget the exact nomenclature for this. Simple knife, very cheap, and this actually used to be on my flick. This one I repurchased uh, recently. The old one, I can't remember what I did with it, it's somewhere. But I have this one and just put it in the sheath and actually carried this on my flick upright with the handle toward my face, blade facing away from my neck. And this was the knife that I had just on my flick for a long time, carrying it around utilitarian knife, cheap and easy if it got broke or destroyed or I lost it, I wasn't really worried about it. But it's got that Scandi grind, high carbon steel, 90 degree edge on the spine, and use this for survival as well. A great knife, cheap and easy, and I think that's one of the differences between survival knives and bushcraft knives is that survival knives can be cheap but still reliable because if we drop this, lose it, or it's taken from us for some reason, we're not really out that much and we don't have that big of an attachment to the knife itself. So that's kind of where I started. I progressed quickly to the Mora Clipper. You guys have probably seen these. You probably have this in your own collection. A very cheap and easy knife from Mora. This one right here I've had for years and years. I've used it to process material, to carve material. Even made a cool little leather sheath for it. But sharpen this thing a million times, put a 90 degree edge as well, still high carbon steel, and you'll see that's pretty much all the knives here. But with this knife, I've processed even large game animals. This is actually my skinning and processing knife for large game deer, pigs, even small game, pheasant, rabbit, squirrels, all kinds of stuff. And this knife has done it all. And it's still in my collection, still one that I go back to frequently just because it's a great knife, cheap and reliable, a good survival knife. From there, really like the Mora Companion. I think this is the Mora Companion HD. Recently spray painted it, which is why it's got the tape on the blade. Just testing out different designs, kind of doing a couple different activities. It didn't really adhere well to the rubberized handle, which is fine, not worried about it. But then the sheath actually looks kind of cool with the spray paint. This could be another good tactical survival knife. The one that was actually recommended as part of the packing list for Sears School was the Mora Companion, just like this. Saw a lot of guys with it, had one myself. We got the Bushcraft Black, just a thicker version of this, more robust. And then probably the best overall knife for survival as well as for bushcraft, in my opinion, has to be the Mora Garberg, at least from kind of a cheaper, more cost-effective option. The Mora Garberg, it's got that full tang, it's got Scandi grind, 90 degrees on the edge of the spine, high carbon steel, and this knife is just very robust and I've used it a lot. You can see I just beat the crap out of it and it's still kicking, still good, still have it as part of my collection. Some of these knives are not going to have that full tang. They're going to be considered rat tail tangs or three quarter tangs. I think the more clipper only comes down to it right about here in the handle or so. 
It's not absolutely necessary for survival, in my opinion. You can have a full tang knife if you want, but a cheap and reliable knife is kind of the difference between a bushcraft and a survival knife. As we progress, we get to more expensive knives and then knives that have slightly different designs. From right about here on forward, we generally have full tang knives. Again, I don't think you need a full tang knife for all your knives, it's good to have if you're gonna be beating the crap out of it, like the Pathfinder PSK-1, Personal Survival Knife 1. It's a full tang knife, and I've had this one for years. This one is meant to be a one-tool option, which is why it's full tang and incredibly thick material with that Scandi grind as well, good for shaving and carving. Not as good as a recent replacement, which is the Pathfinder Survival Knife. You can see the bevel on that Scandi grind is slightly larger, still a thick blade, high carbon steel, and it's generally the same design, generally the same length, just with a different handle material. Still a great knife, but I like the fact that the bevel is actually larger on this knife because it means better carving, longer, more curly feathers on your feather sticks if you're actually creating feather sticks for fire. Still a good tool. This one, a little small on that bevel, in my opinion, but this one is meant to be bashed and beaten into material to take down large material and act as a one-tool option to process material, similar to a axe. Like we would swing an axe into a tree, this one we could swing into a tree or put a baton or a mallet behind it, add that mass and force behind it and take down trees. And that was kind of the intent with this. I don't think every knife needs to be a full tang. It really depends on how you use it. This Mora here, even though it's spray painted, this one I've used for over a decade and still have it. This Mora Clipper, not a full tang, had it for even longer than my companion right here and used it for a lot of different tasks. It really depends on how you use the knife. If you use the knife correctly, you're not gonna break it, you're not gonna damage it, it's gonna work for you. One of the higher end models, that's popular is the Kellum Wolverine. I've actually got two of these in my collection. This one I've had for years and years. It was a gift after I came back from Afghanistan uh, from a family member because I knew I liked survival and I liked knives and I was really kind of getting into survival at that point. But it's just a beautiful knife and beat the crap out of this thing doing batoning and different work. But in my opinion, this is more of a carving knife, which is what it's generally designed for. It's designed to carve material, make fine tools, and survive in colder climates. And so it's gonna be able to hog off material, and it's generally just a smaller knife that you can carry that's not gonna get in the way. Still a beautiful knife. It's got a rat tail through tang, so it's gonna kind of come down to a small point at the end here, and then it's capped off with that brass. This is still a really good knife. It's almost too beautiful to beat up out in the woods, which is why I have two of them, so I can beat one up and then keep one for my collection. Still a good knife. And as we progress, we've got a lot of different knives. I went through kind of a LT Wright knife phase where I had, I think this is the Genesis, and it's A1 tool steel, full tang. I really like the spear point on survival knives. Spear point, you kind of get a good drill effect if you're carving in notches or divots. Plus you can still carve out for uh, the hearth boards for bow drills and all that kind of stuff. But this one has been used a lot, a lot, a lot. This was the first knife I took to civilian uh, survival training. And you can see it's just beat up, stained, used it a lot. I really didn't like the A1 material. And once I kind of figured out what I wanted in a knife with that O1 tool steel or 1095 high carbon steel, I got away from the A or different types of steel. It doesn't mean it's bad by any reason. You just can't use it as a flint and steel striker with a hard rock on the back of the spine. You can see I've done it a lot with this one. Again, you don't need high carbon steel in a survival situation necessarily. Maybe in bushcraft because that's kind of a, a niche skill or category to use. But for survival, if it's just a blade and it's going to give you the opportunity to process material down and make a fire, either by friction or using a ferro rod or another fire starting tool. That's really all you need. That flint and steel ability for a survival knife is good to have. Absolutely necessary. I don't think so, unless it's really our last option and we want to include that as part of our kit. Still, all of these knives are high carbon steel. I don't think I have any other than my shooter belt knife, which is that SE4. That one is not high carbon steel, I believe. This one is for 
my shooter belt right here. It's just a utilitarian knife. It's for everything. It's for processing materials, for combat, for prying things, or breaking down material, whatever it is. Use it for breaching, if we gotta go through something, whatever, that a knife could handle, obviously. And, you know, use it for opening up MREs, you know? That's the most important thing for a military knife, is opening up MREs. But you can see this one is different compared to all the others. It's gonna be kind of a harder material. It's that flat grind, which is easy to sharpen. We're not gonna be out there using whetstones. It's full tang, a nice grip, and it's got that coating on it to make it somewhat camouflaged to combine with our kit. It's just generally a good utilitarian knife that's part of the collection that I've used before for a while. And it's still sharp. I know that flat grind is sharp because right about here on my finger, there's a nice big scar, and that's because the blade went right into my finger a good half inch, nearly cut some tendons, and I was being stupid and cut myself. So it's still a sharp knife. It will make feather sticks, it will carve. Now it's gonna be as good as, you know, a Scandi knife, like that Bushcraft Black with that Scandi grind. But it's still a good knife. It can be used for a variety of purposes. This makes a good survival knife as well because we can use it for just about anything and we're not worried about damaging kind of a higher end knife like this Karamat Wilderness Ways knife. So like I said, I had a LT Wright phase. I really like the LT Wright. Gary Wines knife, all around bushcraft blade, great handle material, that Scandi grind, relatively thin, still got that 90 degree spine on it, spot point here for the tip, full tang, just a beautiful knife. Use this in a lot of different videos that you guys have probably seen. Just a good knife to have, and it's part of the collection. I've used it a lot, as you can see, and processed a lot of material. 01 tool steel, so it's going to be a good flint and steel striker. Not absolutely necessary, but for a higher end bushcraft knife, this is perfect. And of course, being an instructor at the Pathfinder School, I obviously have a bunch of different Pathfinder knives. I got the original Kephart design. This is an awesome, awesome knife. I've used it, and, and some guys have offered money to purchase this from me, but I've still held on to it. Beautiful knife with the kind of satin finish there. There's no blacksmith finish. And this is one of the originals. Got years and years and years ago. Took to a few courses and used as an instructor. And I've got my Scorpion. Awesome knife. It's got that drop point design. Blacksmith or dirty finish. Good leather sheath. This is a solid sheath that goes with it. I would consider this a good bushcraft and survival knife to have. I've also got one. It's kind of a safe queen. This is one of the original scout knives from Pathfinder. And then toward the end here, I finally got lucky enough to pick up a Skookum bush tool. I put in this order years ago, uh, seven years ago or so, to get a Skookum bush tool from Rod Garcia out there. And he finally got back to me. I thought he forgot about my order, but he finally got back to me. He's just doing this thing on his own, which is perfectly fine, not a big deal. But finally got the Skookum bush tool and it's just a beautiful, beautiful knife. One thing that I think is important in a knife is just the length of the blade. Anywhere between three to five inches I think is good. If you have a larger knife than that, that's not a problem. It's just gonna be hard to kind of handle and process material, make fine carving. So anywhere about a hand palm width all the way to the thumb like this is perfect for cutting, kind of like Morse Kohansky and all those guys recommend. This really is just generally the best length for cutting surface to have on a knife. And you can see here, the design is meant to have just a continuous curve, which makes great, amazing feather sticks. And this is just a generally a great knife. It's also got kind of that hard plate down here on the pummel that we can use to hammer in nails if you need to. I don't think it's generally necessary with a survival knife, but it's still a good knife to have. This one I think would fit both the survival knife as well as the bushcraft knife categories. Really the only difference is need when it comes to different kinds of knives. And I'll explain that here. For that I wanted to show you my safe queen. This one has been in the safe. I generally don't use it because it's kind of expensive. But it is a Woodlore knife from Ray Mears. And it was his model he developed. Finally purchased this one years and years ago. And I've used it. Not a lot, but I've used it. It's just a beautiful, simple knife that a lot of bushcraft knives are designed. It still would function in survival, in my honest opinion. A bushcraft knife like this, a higher end knife, is gonna be heirloom quality, handed down to family, just like any of these knives will be. But the difference between a bushcraft knife and then, let's say, a survival knife is honestly just need, in my opinion. Do you need to have this 
expensive knife, this higher end knife? No, you don't, but for bushcraft, maybe you do because you want to be able to carve material and really demonstrate skill, fine carving work. This will still create other tools. It will make different things from wood and process materials. It's a great knife. But for survival, all we really care about is processing materials quickly, being able to, and I even got a sheath stuck in there, processing materials quickly, and then being able to process game, make hasty tools, and survive for a short duration. And so bushcraft knives are needed for long-term use. They're going to be needed for fine carving and building other tools off the landscape. And then our survival knives, really, they're just taking down material, helping us get a fire going, processing that game so we can cook it and eat it, and creating whatever rudimentary things we need to provide for our most basic needs. And I think that's just the main difference between survival and bushcraft knives. All right, so that was kind of a long talk about survival knives. Very hasty video. Sorry it's at the end of the day. I uh, hope you get to see it if you want to. But the difference between where I started and kind of how I ended up in my knife journey here, as well as survival knives versus bushcraft or higher end knives. Really cost affordability, need just to make rudimentary tools, get the skill done, survive with what you have, as opposed to bushcraft or higher end knives that we're gonna use for making tools, making fine projects, fine carving skills. It'll still function as a survival knife because the best survival knife is the one you have on you, but we can kind of see the difference on you know, cheaper knives versus higher end knives and the difference or where we kind of draw that line between bushcraft and survival. But I hope you like this video, guys. A very down and dirty video today. I apologize. I'll get a better video out next weekend. I hope you like this video. If you did, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, leave me a comment in the comment section. I always appreciate your feedback. I want to thank you guys for everything you do for me, for this channel, for your likes, your views, your subscriptions, your comments, your feedback, and your shares. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can, guys. Thanks.